Some buildings are big, but some of those buildings become less big because some of those buildings are later destroyed. These are 20 tallest building demolitions in the world. Number 20. Mina Plaza Tower We'll begin with the place that's actually known for having some of the biggest buildings in the world, Abu Dhabi. The UAE as a whole have been reworking their whole nation, at least in certain parts, in order to expand and bring in loads of more travels and tourists, which you could argue the world needs more of right now because of certain things going on. But that also means to build things up, they have to bring things down, which includes their once iconic Mina Plaza Tower. This was actually a rather recent demolition as it occurred back in 2020, and it was a quick demolition at that. 144 floors of the plaza were successfully demolished in a record 10 seconds on November 27th. Yes, you heard that right. There's a record for building demolition, and this one set that record. Shall we watch the destruction together? Go grab some popcorn. It's fascinating to watch any building fall down. There's also a slowed down version of it that I honestly like even even more just because it lets me savor all those little moments that went on as the building was tumbling. The demolition involved the use of 6,000 kilograms of plastic explosives and detonator cord, and as is the case with explosions like this, you can bet that they were placed precisely in order to maximize destruction, while also ensuring that it was a controlled explosion. Now if you're curious as to why they would do this, it's because they were reworking that entire area of Abu Dhabi to the extent that they were trying to make a big port area and thus needed this iconic building to make that happen. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. The demolition of the 30-story tall Red Road Tower was one of the tallest demolitions that's ever gone down, literally. Red Road Tower was once a famous and striking part of the Glasgow skyline, but not anymore. It took 88 kilograms of explosives to tear the thing down. The tower was demolished, so new and better homes could be built where it once stood. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below using the hashtag Sweet Topic. Number 19. Ocean Tower now, no, this is not a tower that was in the ocean. We haven't gotten that desperate for real estate. Well, yet anyways. The Ocean Tower was in many ways a project that's the opposite of what the Mina Plaza Tower was. But what do I mean by that? Well, the former project was an iconic part of Abu Dhabi, while the Ocean Tower was meant to be a literal high spot for Texas. And then things went down quite literally. Ocean Tower was intended to provide high-end accommodations in the shape of 151 luxury apartments on South Padre Island. However, two years after construction, began, the building's foundations then started to sink. You don't have to be an engineer to understand that if your building's foundations are bad, you're kind of screwed. They did try to sell it as it was, but as you can guess, it didn't work out, so that's when they made the choice to simply blow it up. But guess what? It actually wasn't that simple. They had multiple weather issues, which included winds that held back not only the setup of the plan, but the demolition of the building itself. Almost fitting, wouldn't you say? After months of preparation and planning work, Controlled Demolition Inc set more than a ton of explosive charges across the building using more than two miles of detonating cord, which is a whole lot. And surely enough, once they got the go-ahead, they were able to bring the building down in only 15 seconds. CDI was kind enough to provide those who wanted to watch, you know, like all of us, with multiple camera angles so that they could see how they leveled this building. It's really poetry in motion and a great end to a terribly built building. Number 18. Landmark Tower 
We're going to stick with Texas for a bit because I'm sure, as you may recall, that everything is bigger in Texas, including their egos. Right, cowboys? And that sometimes includes not only the buildings, but the challenges that go into bringing them down. Such was the case with the landmark tower in Fort Worth. This was a building that one could argue needed to come down for the simple reason that it was a building that had been around for a long time and many felt that its purpose had been served. Some even noted it as being a relic from a bygone era, which to me, it should be preserved, especially since, and I kid you not, they tore it down so that they could make a parking lot. That's right. In terms of demolition, the problems came in multiple forms, not the least of which was its location. It's not exactly in reference to Fort Worth as a whole, but rather the immediate area that it was in. The place was heavy with buildings, and when it went boom, there were plenty of spectators there to see it go. As such, they had to be very careful careful, all to ensure that the controlled implosion not only did its job, but wouldn't hurt the people or the surrounding areas. In fact, some other buildings were so worried about damage that they filed suit to try to get the demolition stopped. It didn't work, and the destruction went on as needed. Shall we enjoy it again? Well, super dust cloud aside, I can say with a straight face that they did their jobs. Number 17. AFE Tower Back in 2014, almost one ton of explosives inserted into 1,500 drilled holes were used on the AFE Tower in Frankfurt, Germany, also known as the AFE Farm to some. The building was at the time the highest ever in Europe to have been demolished using explosives. They do keep records for everything, don't they? Oh, and not unlike the last entry, there was a crowd of people who wanted to see this building get blown up, and I can't say that I blame them. The skyscraper itself would be completed in 1972 and thus had lasted over 40 years before finally being leveled by demolition. Oh, and it was a very massive structure, weighing over 50,000 tons, which honestly makes it really impressive impressive that just one ton of demolition would bring it down for good. It just goes to show you the power of explosives. But not unlike the Texas demo that I just showed you, they did make sure that everyone and everything would be protected from the inevitable dust cloud and debris that was coming. Barriers of up to six meters high were erected around the skyscraper, all to prevent any damage to nearby construction. As if that wasn't enough, they did actually put water barrels in the building so that when the place exploded, the water would help to limit just how much dust would be produced. And in place of the tower came two brand new office buildings, something that some in Frankfurt will no doubt appreciate as it likely helps them to grow economy-wise. Regardless of all that, watching the thing blow up is a beautiful sight to see. Number 16. Brayton Point Power Station so far, I've shown you a bunch of buildings getting blown up, and I'd bet that you would agree that these are typical buildings that get destroyed. But what about those that you wouldn't think about getting destroyed by explosives? Say, more like a power station. You'd think that back in 2019, it would take something truly spectacular in order to get rid of a power station, and in 2022, that would definitely hold true. But don't think that this was an unnecessary thing. It was actually completely necessary, and the people of Boston Austin, where the Brayton Point power station was, cheered as it came down. But why was that? Well, not only because of the explosion, though that's always worth cheering for, but rather this was a power plant that ran on coal, and it was previously the biggest coal-fired plant in the New England area. 2,000 pounds of dynamite would do the trick on not only one, but two coal towers that had to come down. At Kennedy Park and Fall River, onlookers cheered and some chanted, no more coal as the towers fell. Well, mostly fell, that is. There was a big chunk that was able to survive the blast and had to be demoed later, but for the most part, everything turned out good. Now, obviously, there are those who would hate to see something like this happen, but given the state of the world right now, we need to ensure that the environment is treated better and coal emissions do not help with that. Number 15. JL Hudson Department Store 
Here's another spot where you would think that they wouldn't use demolitions on, because after all, the beauty of a department store is the fact that if one business goes out of sale for one reason or another, another one could come right in to take its place with no problem. It's been done countless times and happens every day, but for the JL Hudson department store, it not only came down, but it came down in a record-breaking attempt all the way back in 1998. Hudson was the tallest department store in the country and was second in square foot Footage only to Macy's Anchor Store in New York. Now, at the time, of course, it was dominating the retail market in the city through the 1970s, all before closing its doors in 1983 and became a landmark in Detroit in many ways. The department was representative of Detroit itself. But why? Well, because not only was it large, but it took a while to get done, and a lot of people had to put in a whole lot of work to making the 12 layers of the place and everything that went inside, making it a little sad that it had to go away in the end. But there is a twist to this story, because also like Detroit, it did not want to go away. By that I mean the plans for the building could not actually be found, and thus CDI, who I've talked about before, had to examine the building themselves and look for the perfect places to place the explosives that brought it down. Number 14. Trump Plaza Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino in Atlantic City, New Jersey was reduced to rubble in 20 seconds by 3,000 sticks of dynamite. When Trump opened this facility back in the 80s, he was riding a wave of success, but after a string of bankruptcy filings, the New York property tycoon and reality television host cut ties with it in 2009. By the time that it would finally close its doors in 2014, Trump Plaza was the worst performing casino in Atlantic City, taking in as much money from gamblers in eight and a half months as the Borgata Casino did every two weeks. That's really bad in the casino industry. Danny Ocean wouldn't even think of robbing this place because there wouldn't have been enough to steal. Oh, and in a very New York and arguably Trumpian move, those who did get to watch the building come down had to pay $10 in order to see it fall. Number 13. The Kingdom in Seattle Builders of Seattle's Kingdom said that it was strong enough to last a millennium, although it only lasted 24 years. Sorry guys, but you know, that was only 976 years off. You missed it by just a smidge. But I do have to give them credit. While it may not have lasted as long as they wanted it to, it was a pain to get it down, and that says something. This wasn't only a building that could go boom. and be done with it all, it was also a sports arena, and that meant that there was a lot of things to do before the explosives could be placed. Workers went around, above, and below each other and tore out 10,000 seats, 5,000 bleachers, miles of roofing insulation and wall panels, and anything else that could move, all so that they could get at the beating heart of the place to ensure that the explosives would work. The building itself was actually based on a technique used by ancient Rome to ensure that the building would hold up, and it certainly did, until the explosions would bring it to heel. And as you can tell, it was a very pretty explosion indeed, so maybe it was actually all worth it in the end. Number 12. Xi'an City Building Next up we go to China, another country that's not only home to major buildings, but has been overhauling their domain in order to make sure that they get as modern as possible, even if the people aren't exactly cool with that at times. The building that I'm talking about in particular is one from the place known as Xi'an City, a 118 meter high building that was demolished back in 2015 in around roughly 13 seconds. You'll notice how these buildings come down pretty quickly when they're blown up the right way. It is a testament to both skill and explosion of power. In fact, those who helped to make this explosion and destruction possible were more than happy with how it literally went down. The operation worked quite well, and for one thing, the building collapsed in the correct direction, and for another, it fell down at a low height and was fully exploded. Both the noise and the trembling of the demolition were under controllable range. For further proof of how good their method was, there was a bar about 20 feet from where the building fell, and it was not damaged in the slightest. One of the ironies of this building's destruction was that it had never been used 
used as a building. No, really, it was put in a technology center of the city and yet for some reason was never used. So they decided to get rid of it and put something else in its place that would be useful. Number 11, 425 Park Avenue. If you've ever been to New York or even lived there, you know that there are certain places that are amongst the most opulent and expensive to live in. And Park Avenue, well, that's without a doubt one of those places, as it has all sorts of buildings and apartments that only the richiest of the rich can afford. And if they feel they can make more by taking something down, well, they will. And that's exactly what they did with 425 Park Avenue. This occurred back in July of 2015, and it was the first time that a full block building had been demolished on Park Avenue, and also the first time in 50 years that a new full block building was to be built. And build it they did. Well, mostly that is. You see, at the time that the new 425 Park Avenue was still being built, certain things were going on in the world, and it would have likely been finished by now had those things not happened. But make no mistake, when it's fully operational, it's going to be one of the most high-end places in all of New York to live. In. Granted, that also means that many of you watching and me will never get to see anything but the outside of it, but at the very least we can imagine what it would be like to live there, and also at the very least we get to watch the old one fall in spectacular fashion. Number 10. The Singer Building Have you ever been in a building and felt that it was just singing to you? No? Just me? Well, we'll talk about a different kind of singing building, shall we? The Singer Building opened up to the public in 1908 at 149 Broadway, and when it was made all those years ago, it would set a record for the tallest building completed at the time. And if you look at it, especially in the style of the building and such, you can see how so many people were enamored with it for a while. It was part of the first boom of skyscrapers that were made in New York City, and while others would eventually dwarf it, especially modern skyscrapers, skyscrapers, you can very easily see that it was a special place to be. The facade of the Singer building was that of brick, stone, and terracotta, but the building had a steel skeleton. When it was completed, it had a stunning marble-clad entrance to the lobby, featuring 16 elevators and over 410,000 square feet of office space. However, by 1961, the company that owned the place would move to a new location, and due to the relatively small space that was available in the tower, they decided decided to do demolition instead of keeping it alive. However, it did get one more record through its demolition. It became the tallest building at the time to ever be demoed, the final feather in its cap. Number 9. CPF Building Singapore Singapore is another place that has a history of making rather large buildings in order to both have people use them and for people to be in awe of them. The CPF building was one that definitely fit that bill until it would be brought down in recent years. The building itself would be completed by 1976, and in November of 2015, it was then sold to Ascendas Land, now Capita Land, for $550 million. The last tenant would move out in February of 2017 and demolition obviously began after that. Not surprisingly though, Singapore is going to make the most out of their new real estate and put in a new office building upon where the original one stood. It should be noted that this was the largest building to voluntarily be demoed outside of New York, and that may not sound like much, but many of these buildings have to be forced down, whereas with this one, they were apparently like, yeah, just go ahead and blow it up, we'll make something better. As they say, that's life. Number 8. Four Seasons Hotel even if you've never been to a Four Seasons, you understand the quality that's attached to the place, because this was a spot where a lot of people go to relax and have fun and enjoy a nice day. That is, if the hotel itself is actually completed, but this one, well, not so much. This one resided in East Maputo for over three decades, and it had 25 floors, but they were never actually finished. They were just kind of there. Ironic, wouldn't you say? The main reason for this was because the place was built in Mozambique, and when the hotel was being made, it was when the country had finally gotten its independence, which is a big deal that brings big changes. As a result, construction would stop, and while deals were attempted over the years, they all fell through until they finally brought the building down. 
It must have been cathartic to know that the building that was very likely an eyesore to many was now out of the way. Number 7. Grand Prince Hotel Akaska Okay, we're putting a little bit of a plot twist here, but roll with me. Because we've shown you throughout this list a whole bunch of places getting blown to pieces in quick and methodical manners, now I'm going to show you how the Grand Prince Hotel Akaska went down in 2013 very slowly. This hotel, located in Tokyo, was the subject of an eco-friendly kind of takedown, mainly one that was going to focus on true deconstruction versus the blowing it all the way up or imploding it method. The way that they would do it was to start at the time, and then every 10 days, they would be able to go through two floors of the place. Over time, the building shrunk and would be done without the need for controlled explosives, large dust clouds, and more. Now, I applaud the creativity and the fact that they were able to recycle the materials that were deconstructed and not just obliterate them and throw them all away. Number 6. 4 UK Power Station just so you know, I did not make a mistake in the title. In fact, the power station in question is known as 4UK. Just wanted to be clear on that one. Over in Yorkshire, there were a series of power stations that had been around for about 50 years. Then over the course of a year, they were all gotten rid of via implosion in 2021. Now, while we can appreciate them referring to this as a landmark, if they also felt the need to get rid of it, that's rather telling, wouldn't you say? As you can see in this video, they detonated them within seconds of one another, and for a brief moment, you would think that they were all going to fall on top of each other, but they simply stop and then fall straight down. Explosions are just simply beautiful, aren't they? Number 5. Kerala Skyscrapers now we head to India, where they did something right by getting rid of the Kerala skyscrapers back in the year 2020. The Supreme Court would order the demolition after a committee would find that they were built in breach of rules that protected coastal areas. In short, these places were bad for the environment, and they ended up having to go. Oh, and go they did, and more apparently followed. Now, I will say that it was a bit odd that the skyscrapers got so far along before being called out, but I feel for the families that ended up losing their homes due to that. And again, explosions are pretty. Number 4. M.D. Anderson Houston Building the iconic 18-story limestone-clad building at 1100 Holcomb Boulevard in Houston, Texas was imploded in 2012, which is both funny and ironic for a lot of ways. The building was actually a cancer center that was set up on campus back in 1975. and was an impressive building, but sadly had to go just a bit over 40 years into its existence. If you look at the explosion video, you'll see that it did have a very nice domino effect in terms of how it went down, further allowing everyone to appreciate all that goes into making something like this happen. Number 3. 19 Buildings in China this time, we're going with that title in the literal sense, because at one time, China decided to drop 19 buildings in one set. The demolition in the Hubei province covered 15 hectares of area and used 5 tons of explosives. Just the technical aspect of this is simply astonishing, because blowing up one building can be challenging enough if you don't have the right tools and people, but going and doing it 19 times, to all of which would fall almost simultaneously, that's spectacular and incredible. The controlled explosion in China was carried out at night and managed to safely bring down an estimated 150,000 square meters of concrete, steel, and glass, and the fact that it all fell in 10 seconds can be clearly seen in this video, which is amazing and impressive. Number 2. Champlain Tower South now here's the tale of a set of buildings also going down, but honestly for more humane reasons. The Champlain Tower South were in Miami, but in 2021, part of the buildings would collapse, and when they did, they took many people out with them. As a result of that, the remaining parts of the Champlain Tower South had to be demolished in order to not only ensure the safety of others, but also for the fact that the search parties could go in and investigate the other parts of the wreckage. So this is absolutely a story of a set of buildings needing to be exploded because they weren't actually safe to live in, lives had already been lost, and it would be painful for many to see them still standing.
Number one, St. John General Hospital. The St. John General Hospital was built all the way back in 1931 in St. John, New Brunswick. And if you know the phrase, city on a hill, well, this was kind of like that, except that it was a hospital on the hill. The hospital lasted there for quite some time, all the way up until the 1980s, and then in 1995, it would be ordered to be demolished. The catch here was that they had to do a really controlled explosion, all because the surrounding areas to the hospital couldn't be touched by it. But thankfully, they were able to make it work, and the hospital would be brought down safely and securely. Its dome survived, the demolition intact, and was pulled from the rubble, and now forms the roof of a gazebo in a small St. John Park located near Garden Street. And that's all from the realm of really tall buildings that came down in big ways thanks to demolition. Were you amazed as you watched these massive buildings come down? And which ones impressed you the most in regards to how they fell? Do you know of any others that should be on this list? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. Check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.